It's been a year and I'm back. All right, I'm sorry if that was kind of loud, but anyways, this was my first ever video that I uploaded to this channel. And I'm still pretty proud of that video, even though the audio is a little bit weird. And I mentioned that in my pinned comments that I apologize for the audio. Also, I really, really appreciate that a lot of people took the time to leave a comment and update on some things that I really couldn't find online. So thank you for that. So, as the one year mark was approaching, I decided why not make a part two to the iceberg. Also, this is the unofficial sequel to the iceberg. I did not make the previous iceberg, um, this is just something I really wanted to do and I felt like there were a lot of things more in the community and some things I personally grew up with when the fandom was at its peak, like AMVs and cosplays which you can still see a lot of today. Anyways, with that being said, let's continue the iceberg. The Anti-Lorax Theory Now, I won't be talking much about this theory because I highly, highly recommend you checking out the Theorizer's video on it. It won't do it justice here as me just vaguely describing it, so I highly recommend you checking it out. It will be in the description. This starts out with Grandy Norm with the flashbacks, followed by O'Hare's Ted's dad, and finally the anti-Lorax agenda. Now, if that sounds interesting to you, go ahead and check out the original video that will be in the description. I hop promo meals. In 2012, the Lorax partnered up with IHOP to release a set of meals that were lunch and breakfast. So I had no idea this existed, and this isn't their first time that they partnered up with a Dr. Seuss IP, as their first collaboration with, was with Horton Hears a Who. Oh, also you get free seeds with the meal, for a kid's meal, so there's that. Um, anyways, here's the clip. The Lorax is here at IHOP. Adults will love the Lorax's green eggs and ham with fluffy whole wheat pancakes. Kids will love pancakes and crispy waffle cones with blueberry topping. Here you go. Ooh. Ooh, seeds. I wonder who's going to be the first one to plant these. <laughs> I don't mind if I do. Let's make a difference and plant three million new trees. <laughs> make it an IHOP day. AMC policy ad. So this was a policy ad for a basic cinema etiquette, you know, like try not to talk too loud or try not to chew your food too loud, all that stuff. I'll play the clip here. I think it only played in AMC theaters because I don't remember seeing this one. Don't you just love going to the movies? The lights are down. The movie's about to start. It's magic. Hey! No, I can totally talk. Shh. Oh, you shut your mustache. All right, enough. <laughs> I am the Lorax and I speak for the audience. Try to be quiet, try to keep still, and we'll all have more fun at the movies. We will. And don't forget to come see me, the Lorax, only in theaters. Dr. Seuss's The Lorax. In real D and IMAX Treaty. <laughs> Once their cosplay videos. Alright, so nowadays it's really common to see this, but Joy Bon Wolf 2 actually made this How Bad Can I Be music video, which is really iconic. I remember seeing it way back in the day, and if you haven't, I highly recommend you go checking it out. But yeah, a lot of cosplays in this community, and it's cool to see that people are still making cosplays today. Wensler AMVs. They're actually still up. In fact, a lot of them are still are. Um, but unfortunately, some are lost due to time, but yeah. Some of these AMVs, I still find myself watching them just for fun and nostalgia. Um, I'll leave some in the description below if you want to check them out. Um, I did mention uh, previously of one infamous one that was Wensler and Jack Frost called Be My Bad Boy. Um, I don't know if anyone remembers that video. It's one of my first ones, but yeah, that was something. And yes, the original video, the Beep and Bad Boy AMV, is still up. You can go check that out. The Lorax featurette, Ed Hems on the Wensler. 
This feature is basically Ed Helms talking about his character, the Onceler. I'll play the clip here. I've just edited the clip to one of those I edit videos, so I hope you enjoy that. There are obviously more featurettes, but I obviously included this one. Here, and you know, I remember reading the Dr. Seuss book, The Lorax, when I was much younger, and it became one of my all time favorite books. Who are you and what are you doing here? Are you the Onceler? People say that if someone brings you this stuff, then you're down the trees! Trees. The character of the Onceler was always a bit of a mystery because you didn't get to see all of him in the book, and now, here I am playing the Onceler in the new movie version of the classic story, and it was really fun to see him in a much larger dimension. It all started a long time ago. I was a young man leaving home. Well, here I go, Mom. About to change the world. The Onceler has this idea to create the one thing everybody needs. And no, it is not a newfangled app. Newfangled app. Newfangled app. It is something he calls a thneed. Now that's a thneed. Nothing unmanly about knitting. No, sir. The only problem is making this sweater-like contraption requires him to chop down a bunch of beautiful truffula trees. All right, here we go. He chopped down this tree. What's that? Sorry. I think he did. <laughs> Then the Onceler has to deal with a one-of-a-kind creature called the Lorax. Hey, Mustache, we used to watch this over these trees. What's your deal, man? So the Onceler tries to befriend him. Mm. Mm. Well, I'm gonna eat this, but I am highly offended by it. But wait, there's more. When people finally realize how great this the Onceler is, the Onceler gives the people what they want and gets rich doing it. Oh, yeah. But he doesn't want to take responsibility for what is starting to happen around him. Well, that's it, the very last one. Then, when the worst happens, he becomes remorseful and regrets hurting his friends. The last Truffula seed. You need to plant it, Ted. Because unless someone like you cares a whole lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. It's won't let you down. Dr. Seuss's The Lorax. Mm. How bad can I be AI cover? These AI covers started popping up not too long ago, and they're honestly really funny. Um, I, I think the resurgence of the Oncer was probably because of these How Bad Can I Be covers. I'll leave some in the description so you could check it out because they're honestly hilarious at the end of the day. And well, they're some of my favorite videos that I come across on my algorithm page. Illumination Mario Movie Ad this was during when the Mario Brothers movie was about to be released, and for promotion, Illumination decided to get all of its IPs and pretend they're going to see the Mario movie. I added this to the entry because we do see the Lorax, but we don't get to see the Wanceler, which is a real shame to see. Nostalgia Critics The Lorax You might remember a time where Nostalgia Critic was really popular. One of its most famous ones is The Lorax. This features a lot of skits and also mentions the fandom as well. Obviously the once their fandom. And how the 2012 movie disrespects the original book from Dr. Seuss. I highly recommend you checking it out in case if you haven't. Since it shows some of the important aspects of the 1971 book. Biggering versus how bad can I be? Yes, I did mention this in the previous iceberg, but hold on. 
I wanted to take this time of the entry to showcase a lot of people's uh, interpretations of the Big Ring storyboard. Some of these are really amazing. They're obviously going to be listed in the description below if you want to check them out. But it really showcases a lot of people's like point of view of how the Big Ring scene would have been if the movie kept that scene and while well, the official one. I really like seeing these because it shows how much potential Big Ring had. Let it grow meme. You honestly just had to be there. This was way back in 2017 and 2018 where you cannot escape the freaking let it grow song. Neither can I and I honestly got fed up with it as much as a, a lot of people did as well. Um, I did find it funny. I know a lot of people didn't, but I did. And this is just a rabbit hole I was typing in, but every time you're gonna find a lot of videos from way back in the day. Preppy Lorax meme. So these preppy Lorax memes, I want to say they popped up sometime last year. Um, they're basically like the Lorax, including the Grinch, and of course the ones that are partaking in like everyday activities. They have like a storyline. Sometimes they include Peppa Pig characters. But yeah, it's personally not for me, but if you want to go check it out, I will leave a video down in the description so you can go check it out. What the Lorax needed. This video by Draw Opinion Dump really showcases a lot of the Lorax history and what we can do about the environment. And more towards the end, it talks about the 2012 movie, which uh, could definitely have used biggering, but to avoid spoiling, the link will be in the description below so you can check it out. Film Theory The Lorax Movie Lied to You. This theory goes in talking more about the changes to the story of the Lorax. This also talks about how the Oncer isn't really the bad guy, and neither is O'Hare. Also, Matt Pet mentioning the Oncer fandom and knowing what Camp Wee Hawken is is such a full circle moment. I was really not expecting, well kind of expecting since it's pretty infamous at this point. But anyways, the real villain of this story is the consumers, aka us. Yep, and that's as much I'm going to talk about this theory as I will leave a link down in the description for this video. Ted goes to see the once again deleted scene. So the scene basically speaks for itself, but it seems that like the Onceler had more of a connection to Ted. He was a lot more friendlier and he did mention the Oncer did mention that his family, the part where he mentioned about his family, he's not all that proud of. Maybe in some other deleted scene or in the movie, we get to see more of the Oncer's relationship with his family. The Onceler and his songs. This behind the scene feature talks more about Ed Helms, the Oncer, and How Bad Can I Be, and a bit of the development of How Bad Can I Be as well. It's pretty cool to see, I did not know this existed, this was not previously in my last iceberg on the Oncer, so I had to include it in this part too because it is really cool to see, as I mentioned I've never seen this behind the scenes clip. This is it! <laughs> And then we have a character in The Onceler who has a guitar, and that guitar serves as kind of a doorway into two or three scenes where music becomes quite prominent. The Onceler has an affinity for music, uh, as do I, so that was a good fit there. Ed did all his own singing. He's great. He's actually quite an accomplished musician. He plays uh, banjo and guitar. There's a moment everybody needs a Thneed, where the one sort of gets the idea to do a sales pitch to sell his Thneed. Oh, I got a little jingle. Gonna blow some minds. Gonna sell some Thneeds. Yeah. He's so happy and enthusiastic, and it fails. Everybody needs a Thneed. A fine thing that all people in the body of the film, you know, one of my favorites is How Bad Can I Be, which is, is a great mantra of somebody who's kidding themselves. How bad can I, can I be? I'm just building the economy. How bad can I be? Just look at me petting this puppy. Yeah. The challenge of that song is 
in three minutes, we have to cover narratively what's probably months and years. The ones are turning to the dark side. He's just getting worse and worse and worse, getting deeper and deeper into greed. The Lorax movie behind the scenes. This behind the scenes feature just talks about how they made the movie The Lorax and taking inspiration from the Dr. Seuss book. And featuring some voice actors as well, I do highly recommend you checking out the behind the scenes footage as I really like to see movies being made and I think you will too. Camp Entry Camp Entry is a Truffle of Flu movie. It had a trailer as well and it's by Hunt Camp Entry. There is subtitles in the video since it's not in English. I won't be spoiling anything from this movie, um, I highly recommend you checking it out, obviously the link will be in the description. There is obviously a lot of Truffle of Flu material but this is something that I really don't see get talked a lot. This was also released back in the golden age of the fandom and as well as the internet. I did mention in the last one Sir Iceberg how I wish Truffle of Flu and all these AUs would make a comeback cause they really had a lot of heart and soul put into them. iceberg i hope you enjoyed this video i had a lot of fun making it and revisiting some fun and nostalgic one star things especially the amvs and cosplay videos again i highly highly recommend you checking out camp entry it is one of my favorite things from the fandom and i want to give a huge thank you to everyone who checked out my channel has been subscribed since the boost on this channel i i cannot express this enough i cannot say thank you enough to everyone who has checked out my channel and has been subscribed it really means a lot to me if you made it this far into the video thank you i really appreciate it anyways bye bye <laughs>